Hi there. Now, remember, in the first part, we were asked to show this identity here. And for the second part, it says, hence solve the equation sine theta all divided by sine theta plus cos theta plus cos theta all divided by sine theta minus cos theta equals 3. For theta greater than or equal to 0 degrees, but less than or equal to 360 degrees for 4 marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, for this particular part then, we've obviously got to connect this to the result we had in part one because of the hence. We can see that the left hand side here is identical to 1 divided by sine squared theta minus cos squared theta. So that's our starting point. We can say that 1 divided by sine squared theta okay, minus cos squared theta, well, that's going to be equal to the 3. And so if I rearrange this, multiply both sides by sine squared minus cos squared theta, and then divide by 3, I'm going to get that therefore sine squared theta minus cos squared theta, well that's going to equal one third. Now I've got to change this into the same trigonometric function. And there's two ways I can go about this. I can change sine squared theta into cos squareds through this identity. And that is that you should know this, that is that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is always identical to 1. So sine squared theta would be the same as 1 minus cos squared theta. So I could replace that with 1 minus cos squared theta. Okay. And then we've got minus cos squared theta there. And that would equal 1 third. Or alternatively, I could take the cos squared theta and change that to 1 minus sine squared theta. So I'd get sine squared theta minus, and then in brackets, 1 minus sine squared theta here, and that would equal a third. So you might like to try that way. You should end up with exactly the same solutions as I do at, uh, at the end here. Okay? So just for further practice, why not try that? But carrying on with this version, okay, we've got 1 then minus 2 cos squared theta, and that equals the 1 third. So I've just got to rearrange this now. I can subtract a third from both sides and add 2 cos squared theta to both sides. So I'd have 1 minus a third is 2 thirds, and that would equal 2 cos squared theta. I'll write it the other way around, though, that 2 cos squared theta equals 2 thirds. And I can see then that if I just divide both sides by 2 at this stage, I therefore have that cos squared theta would equal 1 third. OK, so we've got that. Now I need to take the square roots then to both sides here. So therefore we've got cos theta next equals the root of one third. Well that's the same as just square rooting the top and square rooting the bottom. The square root of the top would still be one and we'll just leave the bottom as root three. Don't forget there'll be plus or minus there. So cos theta equals plus or minus one over root three. So to get theta, I just need to inverse cos both sides. So theta equals the inverse cosine of plus or minus 1 over root 3. And at this point here, I'd want to draw a quadrant diagram rather than a graph. It's up to you, though, if you want to go for a graphical method for the solution. I find quadrant methods much easier to work with. Remember, this is 0 degrees, then we've got all of them are positive here. Sine is positive, tan is positive, cosine is positive here. We've got 
positive and negative values for cosine. So we've got all the quadrants taken care of. So what we do is we draw a line in the first quadrant, mark in that angle, that's where cosine is positive. It would also be positive in the fourth quadrant. So draw another line equally inclined to the horizontal here. For the negative versions, we would have these two quadrants taken for cosine being negative. And what we've got is two lines equally inclined again to the horizontal. These angles here will be exactly the same as the angles here. So possible values of theta will be this one starting from zero, turning in an anti-clockwise sense. Remember, this is 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360, and we want angles between 0 and 360. So this one will be a possible solution, theta. We've got another one coming from here all the way around to the second blue line. That's a possible theta. And we've got another one starting from here, going all the way around onto this blue line. So that's another possible theta. And we've got one more, which I'll do in brown, say. OK, going from here, hopefully we can get this in and make it look reasonable. All the way around, OK, to there. OK, so that's theta as well. So what are these angles going to be? Well, if we inverse cos positive 1 over root 3, you end up with the acute angle 54.73 and so on degrees. So that means that this little blue angle in here, which corresponds to the red theta, well that is 54.73. All these little blue angles in here are 54.73 degrees. So we can get the green one by doing 180 minus 54.73 and that comes to 125 then point two six and so on degrees. We can get the pink one here, which is going to be 180 degrees plus a further 54.73 and that's going to give us 234.73 and so on. And finally, to get the brown theta, it's going to be a full 360 degrees minus the little blue angle here of 54.73 and that's going to give us 305.26 and so on degrees. Now we're asked to, well we're not asked actually, to give them to any degree of accuracy. I'm going to give them to one decimal place. So that's going to equal 54.7 degrees for the first one. The next one is 125.3 degrees, next one 234.7 degrees and finally the last one 305.3 degrees and I'll just put a note here that they are all to one decimal place, 1dp for short. Okay.